All right, so let's continue on this watercolor. Now I'm going to use my number six round. And I'm going to start working with a little bit of the greenery here. So I'm going to get a little bit of sap green, one of the colors I told you I'd use. I'm going to water it down quite a bit. Again, just like I said in the last video, just keeping it, keeping it as light as possible. Um, and then some of these areas are going to get quite a bit darker here in a bit, but uh, for the time being, I like to just get a base, base color down. Come up into this cypress tree here, maybe get, allow that to get a little bit darker. All of a sudden, in juxtaposition to all these cool colors, I now have a little warmth going. It gives us a better idea of um, a little bit of sunshine. Bring a little yellow into that sap green to warm it up a little bit, give it a little bit more sunshine. Just drop that in, just let it bleed into the green a little bit. Warm it up. When I get to this stage of the painting, um, I think you can, this is not necessarily like step one, two, or three. I think you can bounce around to some different colors uh, in your layering. And I don't think it really matters so much as long as you don't get too dark. I'll get some more of my ivory black. But one of the things I have decided about uh, the way I'm proceeding on this painting is I'm pretty much going to work on this area today. Um, you know, obviously this is my focal point. Um, last week I kind of focused back here in the background and just kind of setting the whole painting up. And now I get to kind of come in, get a little bit more contrast and, and some more detail. This is my Rissalon brush again, and uh, this is the ivory black. I get a little bit more contrast here. Again, leaving some of those lighter spots. I'll show you guys later how you can darken those up so that they don't look like you know, real bright lights there. This is that same wall. It just kind of curves around here instead of retaining wall. Keeping the gardens from falling into the lake. And then this corner is going to be pretty dark. So I'll just drop a little bit more paint in there and see what that starts to look like. Um, when you start to get a full range of value, meaning light to dark, then all of a sudden your painting starts to come to life a little bit um, and we're not really close to finished but we can begin to see that we're going to get there. This is ivory black going up over this tree. Uh, very transparent but darkening it down a little bit. I'm still going to be able to to see that green through. And I'm leaving little bits of the green here because so that's going to give me the idea that the sun is hitting that. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush here. I'll leave you right there. And go back to my number six. Again, I'm going to leave a little bit of that green on these sort of manicured hedges here. You can see where the light is coming from and see how it's casting a little bit of shadow across the dark side of this stuff. And these, of course, 
wires are connected. For me, this is the fun part. You just get to play a little bit more. And I'm occasionally looking up at my reference, but I'm also paying attention to just, just what happens here. I don't need to make it look exactly like my photograph. Okay, let's let this dry. All right, now that that's dry, I remember that one of the things that I want to do way off in the distance here is this little bit of land where the town of Fiume Latte is. Uh, I really want to add just a little bit more green to that because it's off in the distance, but it's not quite as far as this stuff, which is bluer. So what I'm going to do in this case is add some of the green back into my cobalt blue mixture from the last painting session. I think you get a, a very bluish green or a greenish blue, however you want to think of it. Again, I'm going to add more water. We really keep this light. Now that this these hedges are dry, I'm going to be able to paint around them or through some of the dark parts. Just make sure you leave that little sunny green highlight there. This is going to get just enough green in there to make that believable. I want it too dark though. So I'm gonna lift a little bit with my paper towel. And now I'm gonna add some details on this little structure here. It's an octagonal building, but for a painting this size and as far away as it is, you don't really have to get too much in. Just the, the darkest darks. And like I'm leaving a little bit there because I know the sunshine is hitting that. You take a look at your reference. And then uh, there's definitely these two portions back here, two thirds of it are not getting hit by so much light, so that's a bit darker. But as you can see, I'm still making sure I let a lot of that white paper show through. It's a white building, so I still want it to read that way. Talk, when I teach, I talk a lot about connecting different areas, and that's one of the things you're going to see me start doing in the next few stages. Is um, We've got a blue area here, we've got a green area here, and we've got kind of a gray area here. And I think watercolor is a, a lot about layering, and it's when you start connecting these layers, or connecting these sections with layers, rather, that your painting really begins to click. So here I've got this ivory black wash that is now coming in a little bit over my greenery, giving me more contrast, coming down over the stone wall, and coming up into the little structure here. Not bricks here, they're all stone, but 
I'd like to just give a little bit of suggestion of that. Hope you can see this well in the video, just and, and the direction that they're going in. That's very important. A little balcony there. Okay. Let's let that dry. One of the things about um, having sun and shadow in a painting is the contrast of not only light and dark, but the warm and the cool. And so now I'm gonna to start to use some of the, the Payne's Gray that I suggest, suggested you guys have for this painting. And in my palette, I keep it right next to the ivory black. And it just has a cooler cast to it, not quite blue. Um, but it's a nice dark, and when I get this down next to some of those warmer green areas, um, it really works well to feel the cool temperature of the shadows. Uh, the reason I used ivory black here is because the stone that makes up this wall is actually quite warm in color, but then if a shadow comes over top of that, it would cool it down. giving my brush a good rinse here too. I've got a lot of pigment there and I realize I wanna thin it down on the page, make it a little bit more transparent. And you can do this with your trees here too. Again, just, I want it to be transparent enough to see that green through, but I want it to read a little bit more like a dark when you first see it. Um, and just the hint of green will let you know that it's definitely a big cypress tree here. I'm not going to go over that part. I think that's dark enough. Because that's a white building in shadow, if I darken that down too much, it's going to read like a different color. So now that we have some connecting shadows there, so looking back at my photograph, I'm realizing that I really need to address this area here. It's where we get the reflection of the building and the wall um, off of the water. Um, and then later on, perhaps in another session, I'll show you how I'll address the water. But when you're painting water, um, you know, it's not always blue. I mean, we see a lot of blue in this painting, uh, but that's always in the case when it's uh, reflecting the sky. Uh, there's also a lot of green uh, in water too, often because it's reflecting the land on the trees. Um, and then some of the, the Payne's Gray can show up in there as well. Um, but when it comes to addressing an area like this, I don't try to paint every little reflection. I really, uh, I really like to let the watercolor and the water specifically do its thing. There is nothing more appropriate for painting water than watercolor. Um, and I've got some little light pencil lines of some of the areas of white paper that I want to see here that I want to be left, where the very light waves are hitting against the shore here. We'll just keep it confined to this area, because when you see a reflection like this, typically it would come straight down, straight down towards the viewer. You know, a shadow might have an angle, uh, but reflections come straight down, depending on where the viewer is. Um, 
I'm gonna get a, a little bit of my cobalt blue. Definitely wanna see a little bit of that. And sometimes I'll just add this stuff at different times. So this is gonna read a little bit darker than what we had there in the initial layer. And bring a little bit of that sap green into there. Bring a little bit of that. I'm gonna get a little bit of Payne's Gray in there, but I think I'm gonna switch to that number six round again. It's gonna give me a little bit more control here. Now this is wet into wet, so it's kind of it's uh, it's bleeding and it's kind of going to some of the low parts of the paper. And this is not gonna be my last layer here. So, as long as it stays fairly light, I'm not too worried about what it does. And then one of the things I like to do is just kind of, this is going to have some, a little bit of, not a jagged edge, but some directional marks. Hinting at the plane of the water and also just some light ripples and waves here. at that I realize I just want to soften that edge bring it back a little bit so it's more in line with this so while that stuff's really wet and hasn't been down for long you guys can blot that up I think I'm just gonna let that edge be very soft for now Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. So at this stage of the painting, I'm really feeling pretty good about how things are developing. And uh, this is actually starting to look like something now. Um, and while I've got a ways to go on the painting, it's really, I'm really starting to be able to visualize where I'm going with it. So I'm just gonna put a few um, little details in and then I'm gonna stop for a few days, let you guys catch up. And uh, I think we've, we've done some good things on this today. W one of the things I'm gonna do is just get the, the palm tree in. Maybe not the leaves, but at least get and not as, get this in. Not as dark as it will be eventually. But just get something in. Remember how I told you guys you want to work the whole painting overall, so you don't you don't want to leave major parts of the painting um, for the very end. And I think that that's pretty important. So I want to be able to see what that vertical looks like in there, and then this little dark bit here. It's going to be a good, it's a good part of this composition to darken this, direct the eye back in this way. Okay. Okay, um, so that was pretty good. That went pretty quick. Um, tune in again to uh, the next video where hopefully we'll get a little bit closer to finished here 
and uh, put in the finishing details. See you next time. Ciao.